يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور ادواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسيرة العلياء وعطرة الشدى طيب يفوح لأهل كل زمان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Now the force has shifted and the Muslims are getting stronger day by day The funny thing is that Throughout the Mecca period, throughout the 13 years that the Prophet had spent والسلام, in Mecca, the Muslims were ordered, ordered not to fight back. Some of them were killed. So a lot of them were tortured physically. Allah ordered them not to fight back. And this shows you that this was from Allah. The religion is from Allah. Any one of us would have given the permission to take up arms and to defend yourselves and die in your cause. But this was from Allah, the all-wise, the all-knowing. Allah knew that if they were to even raise a hand, the whole of Quraysh would annihilate anyone who accepted Islam. But because they did not fight back, they felt these are insects, ants, bugs. They're not going to harm us. Let's just toy with them. And this preserved Islam. So what was next on the agenda of the idol worshippers of Quraysh. They made an unjust covenant and they hung it in the Kaaba. And this just to show you the audacity of these people. What was in the covenant? That they would not marry from Bani Hashim and Bani Muttalib. You remember the Prophet's name, alayhi salam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Now, Abdul Muttalib, by the way, Al Muttalib is not a, a god that they used to worship. Hashim had a brother, and his name was Al-Muttalib. This is why we have Banu Hashim and Banu Al-Muttalib, the descendants of Hashim and the descendants of Al-Muttalib. And Hashim had a son when he married in Medina and came back to Mecca. So the son was born in Medina. He grew up in Medina with his mom. And when he was about 14 or 15 years of age, Hashim's siblings talked to him and said, we can't leave your own son in Medina and you, has, you have to bring him back. So he sent his own brother, Al-Muttalib, to retrieve his son and gave him money to compensate his mom and his uncles. So Al-Muttalib went to Medina and diplomatically and politely asked them that a boy should be 
raised with his father and uncle, with his tribe. And they agreed. And he compensated them with money and was kind to them. And he took his nephew with him back. His nephew's name was Atiq. When he reached Mecca in a caravan, the people of Mecca knew the people in the caravan. We know this one. We know Al-Muttalib. But we don't know this 15-year-old with him. This is the first time we see him. Oh, he must be a slave he bought from his trip from Medina. He is Abdul Muttalib. He's the slave of Al Muttalib. And this is where this nickname stuck to him. He said, No, this is my nephew, he's not my slave, but already the name has been there. So Banu Hashim and Banu Al Muttalib, they're cousins. And because they're, of, they're being close to one another, the people of Mecca in the covenant treated them together. Banu al-Muttalib could have said, we have nothing to do with Banu Hashim. They are our cousins, but we don't have anything to do with them. They did not. They took sides and said, we will stick with our cousins. So they all went into the ravine of Abu Talib, an area was known for Abu Talib, who is the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, and his name, as you know, Abu Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib. And they boycotted them, both Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib, that they would not marry from them. They would not sell them anything. They would not sit with them. They would not mix with them. They would not enter their homes. They would not speak with them until they surrender the Prophet ﷺ and give him to them so that they could kill him. And they wrote this covenant and hung it inside of the Kaaba. The Muslims were surrounded and they were blocked from all means to help and protect them. Their children started to cry. Their women suffered immensely because of this boycott. And they could, they could hear the sounds and cries from beneath and beyond the ravine of hunger and starvation. The Muslims suffered a lot to the extent that they had nothing to eat except leaves of trees and all pieces of thrown heaves and leather that was tossed away with the exception of what was sneaked in from their relatives and friends without the notice of the people of Quraysh. But this was not sufficient. This was not enough. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him, says, I remember this hard time that we spent in that ravine of Abu Talib. Once I was urinating and I heard something under my urine. So after I finished, I dug it out and I found a piece of heave or leather of a dead sheep. So I took it and I washed it and I burnt it and I ate the ashes of it. And it gave me strength for a few days. See the amount of starvation and hardship they went through? And this went on for three years until a group of men, idol worshippers, but honest men, they convened in secret and said to one another, what's happening to 
our friends and relatives in the ravine of Abu Talib is unfair. Three years and their women and children are suffering for doing what? And each one of them started saying, this is true, this is unfair. If I had a man to support me, I would have stood against it. And one of them said, I'll support you. And he said, if I had another man to support us, we will stand against it. A third one stood, and a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth. So they all plotted. And in one of the gatherings of the people of Quraysh, one man stood and said, what's happening is unfair. Abu Jahl said, shut up and sit down. Another man stood and said, no, he's telling the truth. You shut up and sit down. And a third one stood up and said, they are saying the truth. It's unfair. So six of them stood up and proclaimed that this was unfair. And Abu, La Abu Jahl said, this is something that was plotted earlier. This is not something that was just spontaneous. This was plotted earlier. And the people of Quraysh sided with them and felt sorry for those in the ravine. So they went into the Kaaba to take down this unjust covenant and to their surprise found that it was almost dissolved, all of it, except to the names of Allah. The bookworm came and ate most of it. And alhamdulillah, they were released from that ravine. Unfortunately, this three, these three years had its toll over the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, Abu Talib. And six months after leaving the ravine and being released, Abu Talib fell sick and died. And three days later, our mother Khadija also died, may Allah be pleased with her, and the Prophet was 50 years of age at that time. Scholars call, and historians, call this year where Mother Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, and Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet died in, they nicknamed this year to be the year of sorrow. But nowhere in the authentic hadith where the Prophet himself or his companions had called this year the year of sorrow. So it's not an actual authentic name of it. And this was about three years from migrating to Medina. This was on the 10th year of da'wah in Mecca. So the support, both financial, physical, emotional, and the rest that the Prophet had والسلام, from two of the most beloved people to his heart, Mother Khadija and his uncle, whom he tried to the best of ability to make him say the shahada before his death so that he would intercede to Allah Azza wa Jal with it. But he, he could not. And Abu Talib refused to embrace Islam. This support that he got from these two individuals was all gone. Which meant that the Prophet Sallallahu needed to look for other forms and means of support and protection for himself and for the Muslims alongside with him. هذا والله أعلم ونسبة العلم إليه أسلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. يا راغبا في كل علم نافع. 
ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسيرة العلياء وعطرة الشدى طيب يفوح لأهل كل زمان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان